Today I'm going to share with you some tips on how to prep your vehicle. Stick around guys. Hey, hey YouTube. Welcome back to Arabin Outdoors. Hey, I'm Arabin, but you knew that, didn't you? Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a very important topic um, when we're talking about prepping, and that is how to prep your vehicle. That's something I think some people neglect or just don't think about sometimes, but it's very important. While my ultimate goal in an emergency situation is to bunker down, not bug out, I want to make it clear that this is not a bug out vehicle, bug out type of scenario. We all know, we've all seen those cars on the side of the road that are abandoned, that have broken down. Maybe some of you have been that vehicle. I know it's happened to me. And it's something that you don't want to ever happen. But it's a reality. Sometimes things happen to your vehicles and um, you don't know what's going to happen where you're going to be when it happens what the conditions are going to be like is it day is it night are you near something are you far away stuck out in the middle of nowhere is it snowing and raining um, is it cold is it hot a lot of different factors and it's it varies depending on where you live but the point is a lot can go wrong so what I want to do is share with you some tips on, on, on how I have prepped my vehicle and maybe it'll help you guys out the first thing I want to share before we go outside or over to the carport and take a look at my vehicle the number one thing that you can do to prep your vehicle is preventive maintenance and by preventive maintenance, I mean having routine inspections done on your car, making sure that you have your oil and your filter changed, making sure you keep your windshield wipers in good condition, make sure your tires are in good condition. You want to make sure that you don't have any leaks. You want to check your belts. All of those things that you can do yourself or there are plenty of auto mechanics out there that are willing to, to help you. It's called preventive maintenance for that reason. It is to help prevent maintenance. If you take care of your car, your car will take care of you. Now, we're going to go outside and I'm going to show you my vehicle and share with you some of the things I've done to prep my vehicle. Uh, a little bit about my vehicle. It is a 1998 Ford F-150 pickup, even though it's uh, 22 years old, going on 23, still it is a great running vehicle and it's very dependable. Anyway, without further ado, let's go outside. It's raining, so we're going to have to go under the carport, but uh, come on guys. Alright, so here we are with Truck Norris and um, what I usually do at least every quarter is I like to go through the truck inside and out, make sure that I have everything that I need, make sure that if I borrowed something and didn't put it back that I replace it and so forth and so on. So uh, just going around the exterior of the truck, you can see it's in good physical condition. Uh, yeah, the paint job is kind of unique. I did that myself, but I'm talking about things like the tires. You can see I've got a good tread on these tires and good traction is important and uh, making sure that you know your headlights and your tail lights and your brake lights and all that stuff work is very important and uh, but physically this truck doesn't even have a dent in it I believe but you'll see there are a couple of bullet holes. That's because uh, 
one time I was running shine down at old man Hubbard's house and somebody didn't like it and as I was pulling out they took some pot shots at me so I've got one two three four five six bullet holes but other than the bullet holes I've got one little crack right here in this tail light but it's below where the light lights up the light is up here um, I do need to get that replaced I guess but uh, yeah so anyway overall the outside the exterior uh, of the truck is in great condition everything works properly I'm gonna take a look at the inside now all right so inside the truck I'm just gonna sit in the driver's seat and show you what I have accessible and that dinging will not stop so I have to come in and close the door up here on the dash I keep my sunglasses I also keep a pair of night vision glasses which really helps to reduce bright lights at night and I keep a pair of work gloves up there usually I use those when I go to the dump or something it's just a basic truck and let's see here's where the mileage is stuck at and that's what it has been since 2009 so again I don't know the mileage on it um, important things that you need to have right here on my visor I have a flashlight okay and then I have a knife but it's not I don't really have it for the knife so to speak as much as I do this tool right here this is a glass breaker and a seat belt cutter so if I need to break the glass to get out of the vehicle or if I'm stuck and I can't get to my seat belt or it won't open I can use this to cut it but at the same time it's also of course a knife so uh, yeah, that's a, a tool that's important to have, that seat brake, seat cutter, belt cutter, and the glass breaker. Then up here I also have another headlamp, a little light. Now, beside me, on the stick shift here, and you younger people might not know what a stick shift is, but I have a roll of duct tape. And then down here I have one of these it's one of these cool headband things it's got some stuff in it you can hear it crunch and when you wet it it stays really cool so on a hot day or something if you're stuck working on the truck down here I keep my uh, everyday carry bag if I don't have anybody in the car with me I usually leave it in the seat right there but if my wife's riding with me so that she can sit she can sit I put it right down there also within reach right down here under the seat I have a safety knife for my safety and I'm not going to go over the contents of what's in this bag if you're interested in that I'll put a link right up here somewhere and then right next to it I have my emergency trauma kit and again if you want to see what's in this trauma kit slash first aid I'll put a card right up here okay and, and in the trauma bag if I lift it up and reach right here you'll see my protection that's my Smith & Wesson SD9VE the cool thing about keeping this bag right here is when I'm driving it can serve as an armrest also. Uh, right up here I have a, this is where my lighter is, but I also have a USB uh, charger so that I can keep my phone charged if I need to. Alright, so now I'm going to flip over to the passenger seat and show you some things that I have, okay? All right, so here we are sitting in the passenger side, and uh, take a look at the glove box. Of 
course in the glove box I have gloves these are just for when my hands are cold they're not work gloves that's what those gloves up there are for but I also have an extra pair of reading glasses because if I need to see something close up here is the USB cable to charge my phone with the charger that's in here I keep an extra flashlight a mag light in there a pen for writing here's a little auto first aid kit it's more of a boo-boo kit um, that's in there in addition to the full trauma kit there I have the records of the truck I keep a copy of all of my paperwork that I have when I have an oil and filter change done also this is where I keep my insurance information I have these little cups right here these little they're not shot glasses for whiskey or anything these are for sometimes I have to crush my medication and I need to use water for that so these little cups come in handy for that uh, got a comb in here I don't know why I have that I could get rid of that I have an emergency road flare I have another one in my bug out bag behind the seat we'll talk about that in a minute tire pressure gauge that's important to have I have a compass that's important to have some matches and then it looks like some miscellaneous band-aids and another writing pen so yeah that's the contents of the glove box alright so there you go on the back there I have hanging just a, an extra cap in case I go out and I forget my cap this one's cool because it has underneath it has the lights you just push a button and you can see it's got the lights there I just leave that hanging up on this top little rack right here it doesn't get in the way Alright, so in the back of the seat you'll see I've got quite a lot of stuff because I don't have a trunk. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of gear back here. Um, first thing I've got is a trekking pole. Uh, next thing I've got is my bug out bag or my get home bag. And I'm not going to open it up. Um, but again, if you want to see what I have in that bag, I will put a card right up here so you can go check that out. Here I have, this is a beanie, and inside the beanie are uh, cold weather gloves. Over here I have another beanie with more cold weather gloves. No, that's not overkill. That's because, hey, what if I'm stuck and it's not just me by myself? What if my wife's with me? She's going to want to keep warm too, right? Okay, so next thing we've got here is my food box. I do need to check this. So let me get this out. Alright, so what we've got here, this is my food, emergency food. In case we end up getting broke down for a long time with no help or whatever. All it is is a cat litter box. And... Uh, if you open it up, I want to check everything that I have. I have a couple of scrambled eggs, chicken breast with rib meat, some of the Mountain House freeze-dried meals. In my bug out bag, I have a uh, Snow Peak stove and the fuel and the cook kit and everything to cook this stuff. I have plastic forks and spoons a manual can opener I have some spices there I have some chicken flavored fettuccine and savory chicken sauce I want to check the expiration date on this alright the expiration date on this is April of 21 so still good for a couple more months on that I might go ahead and take that out of the rotation, put it in my regular pantry. Uh, bandana, 
light straw for filtering water, wooden utensil for stirring, and then I have uh, a couple of packs of Tuna Creations barbecue. Check the dates on them. Best diffused by July 5th, 2021. August 8th, 2021. So I've still got some time on those. We'll leave them in there. And then nine bottles of water. So we'll have plenty of water to both cook and eat with. And then I have this 2400 calorie food ration bar. Okay. Haven't tasted these before. It's got a five year shelf life. Um, so it's good until June of two, 2023. So uh, again, not that we're going to be able to survive for a week or anything off of this. But if we did get stuck and we were hungry and we did need to eat, we'd be able to do it. The only thing I need to do is replace this. Alright, so let's move around to the uh, other side of the vehicle behind the seat. I apologize for the dinging. I can't stop it. It just does that. But you'll see in the back here I have a raincoat. I have another raincoat. Well, I can't get to it right now. I have my tie machete. My zombie killer. If you want to see more about this tie machete, I'll put a card right up here somewhere. I have, like I said, a second raincoat. Again, remember, it's not going to be just one person all the time. It might be two of us. Then I have a toolbox. I'll put that back here and we'll go over it. Uh, I have a warm weather coat. You'll see there's a backpack there that has two sets of extra clothes. Socks, pants, shirts, and jackets. One for me, one for my wife. Then I also have another set of rain gear here. I don't know why I have three rain gears, but I do. I have a very bright spotlight that is also USB chargeable. So if it does go dead, I can charge it right there in the truck. And then I have a shovel. These are one of these durable, you can't kill military shovels just in case you need to dig yourself out of something. Uh, these things are, well, if they're good enough for the military, they should be good enough for me, right? Alright, that dinging is driving me nuts, so I'm going to close the door. Alright, in the bed of the truck, you'll see I have a little gas can there. I need to upgrade that to a five gallon can. That's only two gallons, so I'm going to do that. Rubber boots here. Got a little camp chair over there. It's always good to have a little camp chair. And then here I've got a box. I've got it bungeed, so let me unbungee it. Uh, one thing I decided that I'm going to do today, since I don't have one of those tool boxes that go across the truck, I use this old cooler. But what I need to do is get some chains and locks. So nobody steals it. But let me go over what's in here. These are all good things to have in emergency situations. And this is stuff uh, related to repairs and stuff like that. Um, I always keep some extra antifreeze in there as well as an extra quart of oil okay uh, I got a couple of little cosmetic things some armor all some armor all tire foam some socks that I use to apply the armor all I have a funnel so when I need to use these two things I have a funnel keep a couple of towels in here shop towels I keep a uh, 
this is paracord this is 50 feet of paracord you never know when you might need to tie down something especially when you have a truck I also have heavier heavier rope here uh, and then some heavier cordage so plenty of cordage for tying down things in the back I have a tie iron if I need to change my tire I have my jack you know and here's the little thing that you use to elevate the jack I have a box of uh, bungee cords again for strapping stuff down in the back and then also I've got this never had to use it before but it's just a tire inflator and it comes with everything so if I do have a flat or I have a tire that's a little low I can use that tire inflator to uh, inflate the tire extra fluids um, I do need to get some there's two things that I need to get and I want to make sure that I add and uh, doing these types of videos is really helpful because I need to get some of that radiator stop leak stuff I need to put some of that in there I need to put some steering fluid and some brake fluid in there and uh, I think that's about it alright and one of the last things that I think it's very important to have that I keep behind the seat of the truck you saw me take it out was my little toolbox and this is just a little simple toolbox but it has things in there um, like this tire plug kit so if I have a hole in my tire or a nail um, and I can identify that and it's leaking I can plug that tire up I have a couple of rolls of um, in addition to the duct tape in the front of the truck I have electrical tape which is good because it's very elastic and stretchy um, another little knife here it's a little, actually that shouldn't be there that's a neck knife I'm gonna take that out put that in my pocket because I do have another knife here in addition to the two knives that are in the uh, front of the truck in addition to whatever knife I'll be carrying I have an extra whistle here I also have one in my bug out bag I also have one on my trauma bag I have a, a little light here um, that is like a shop light it has a magnet and a hanger on it so if I'm doing work under the hood at night I can have light with hands free in addition to the cap that has the lights for hands free and then just general tools wrenches needle nose pliers screwdrivers a socket set you know just the general tools that you would need probably to do repairs on the spot if you know how to do that I think what I have here is my level that I could handle small things that go wrong but the way I have my truck prepped out I feel very comfortable that if it's something that I can fix I would have what I need to fix it and I can keep going I also feel very comfortable that if it's something that I can't fix and I need to stay put in the hopes that someone can find me I have enough where we can be comfortable if it's cold weather to do that with what's in my bug out bag because in there I have a tarp and I have a uh, a folding saw if I need to if something falls across the road and I need to clear it out I have a tomahawk in there another survival knife it's more survival type of stuff if I had to leave my vehicle to get home that's what's in that bag so so I, I really think I've got the basis covered so here's where I'm gonna ask for y'all's help if you can think of anything that maybe I have neglected or left out Leave some comments in the section below. I really enjoy reading your comments, um, but I think I've got things pretty well covered. So I hope that this helps you out. If you have nothing at all in your vehicle, you might want to consider starting. This stuff that I have is not, nothing that I have is very expensive. I hope it helped you. If it did and you like it, please give me a thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed to my channel yet, 
please consider doing so. It would help out a lot. Till next time, keep calm, carry on, and keep it outdoors.